Thank you. Thank you. In 1831, Michael Faraday demonstrated right here in this very lecture theatre, electromagnetic induction. And that started a quest for us to understand and exploit a unique entity, and a one that we use every day, every minute really, but you can't see it or touch it or smell it. It's almost magical, electromagnetism. And electromagnetism touches every part of our life. Just take one data point, the mobile phone. There are now more mobile phones than people in the world. 7.2 billion mobile phones, and that number will already be obsolete. And whilst many of us carry a cell phone around with us, wireless technology, this information from electromagnetic radiation touches so many parts of everyday life. TV and radio, communication systems for police and firefighters to taxi services, and so much more. There is no doubt that wireless technology is a defining feature in modern day life and a crucial part of our social infrastructure. And yet, I'd like to argue that we've only just begun to scratch the surface of what we can achieve by tapping in, harnessing, and exploiting electromagnetism. And I'd like to show a few examples here tonight of what's to come with this technology. But first, I'd like to take a minute just to explain how this seemingly magic entity seems to work, because whilst we all use electromagnetic radiation, few of us actually know how it works. But we encounter portions of the electromagnetic spectrum every day in so many ways. And here you can see the electromagnetic spectrum. And so you can see things that you're familiar with, radio waves, microwaves, ultraviolet, infrared, visible light. These are all things that make up the electromagnetic spectrum. Whether you're sitting at home, walking down the street, on a bus, in a taxi, or here tonight, you're bathing in a sea of electromagnetic waves. These streams of particles of mass, of no mass, photons, patterns of electricity and magnetism that zip zap through space at the speed of light invisibly. Sorry, one sec. <laughs> I've lost my train of thought. I apologize. <laughs> now, we live and move through this invisible broth of energy every day. And since Faraday, we have learned how to transmit data using air as the vehicle. And tonight, I want to show different examples of how we're doing that. So, let's take our first example. I want to show how we can change our life using wireless technology, and how it's shaping our life in so many different ways. The way we farm, the way we fly, the way we design cities, and so much more. For example, 2.8 billion people in the world are still affected by water scarcity. And that number is only going to increase as the need to feed a growing population also increases. And many people are using different ways of or trying to use um, wireless technology and subsoil sensing technology to measure and monitor soil parameters, such as soil temperature, um, the moisture, and nutritional information needed for crop growth. And the uh, information you see here, the project you see here, uses passive RFID technology, 
or radio frequency identification technology and subsoil sensing technology and it's trying to integrate the two things. So what you see here are sensor nodes buried in the soil and they transmit data wirelessly to an RFID reader on the tractor. Now, these sensor nodes don't contain batteries, so they're capable of harvesting the energy from the electromagnetic spectrum generated by the RFID reader on the tractor. So the way it works is we have sensor nodes in the soil, and they transmit that data through the soil wirelessly to the RFID reader on the tractor. And that allows the farmer to determine what action to take depending on the results that they're getting. So when you combine that with GPS information or satellite information to tell the farmer exactly where the tractor is in the, that field, the farmer is then able to make a decision on whether or not to irrigate that part of the field all in real time. So we are moving towards um, precision agriculture by using wireless technology. Or consider jet planes. Now, aeroplanes are mission critical vehicles and we want them to be safe and reliable and efficient. So during development, engines are instrumented with hundreds sometimes even thousands of sensors. And currently, these sensors are hardwired to a data acquisition unit. And because they're hardwired, they are sometimes very expensive, they're time consuming to put together, and they're quite inflexible. But they're also susceptible to cable and connector issues. So, wireless sensor networks have been proposed as a possible solution to this problem for many of the sensors. So, let's imagine a wireless sensor network set up inside an engine. And that wireless sensor network is taking data of that engine. So, things like um, temperature, pressure, force, acceleration. And adding a node to that engine and to that network is quick and simple. That means we can build up more data about that engine. And the more data we have, the more knowledge we can build up of that engine. And the more knowledge we have, the more likely we are to be able to design much more reliable, efficient engines. So we're using wireless technology to help us create much more reliable, efficient engines thus reducing carbon emissions in the world. As a third example, let's think about the built environment. Using wireless technology to map a building, the inside of a building, for the visually impaired. Now, in response to the need to give visually impaired people equal access to public buildings, the use of Braille became a legal requirement in many countries. In the UK, braille signs are affixed to public buildings in many different ways. So uh, you will see braille signs in, um, affixed to toilet signs, to lift panels, and the top and bottom of flights of stairs in many public buildings, such as offices, museums, and university buildings, like my university building here, which is where we piloted the scheme. But for a visually impaired person, there is an inherent challenge here, and that is to actually physically locate the sign in order to read the Braille by touch. Now, it's a real challenge, and it's one that leaves a visually impaired person naturally frustrated. So, we're trying to use wireless technology to help the visually impaired navigate safely through buildings. So how we do it is we have passive RFID tags, radio frequency identification tags, and they are embedded into the Braille signs. Then the visually impaired user of the building would be given an RFID reader, and that reader could be integrated into their smartphone. 
and it will be capable of interrogating those tags wirelessly and retrieving all of the information that that person would need in order to navigate through the building safely. So, we're using wireless technology to help the visually impaired by producing smart navigational tools. For my final example, let's think about big-scale instruments that use radio waves from the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, we've been able to broadcast radio signals into deep space and receive signals from deep space for over a century now. And that has allowed us to, to realize how much of the universe there is beyond what we think we know. So larger and more powerful astronomical instruments have been designed in the past decades to look deeper and deeper into space. Now, I'm very fortunate to have been part of a large-scale project, a big international team, looking at building the next generation instrument. The largest and most powerful astronomical telescope in the world ever. It's called the SKA, or the Square Kilometre Array. Now, the Square Kilometre Array will be made up of hundreds of thousands of radio antennas. And you can see um, an artist's rendering here about how it may actually look like. And all of these antennas will be connected, and they'll be spread across thousands of kilometers. But they'll have a central core in Western Australia and in a remote area of South Africa. And the size of the SKA will make it 50 times more sensitive than any other radio instrument. And that will allow us not only to extend our knowledge of the observable universe, but also to ask and answer key questions in astrophysics, cosmology, and fundamental physics. In fact, the SKA will be so sensitive that it will be able to detect an airport radar system on a planet 10 light years away. And the amount of data it will produce is enormous. The dishes of the SKA will produce 10 times the global internet traffic. Almost two centuries ago, Michael Faraday stood in this very lecture theater and captured his notes in this very notebook, his ideas on electromagnetism. And I'm very, very honored to be standing next to this. And that kicked off a quest for us to understand, harness, and exploit electromagnetism. And we've done quite well so far, but guess what? We're still just at the beginning. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.